<laughs> One in eight women in the U.S. will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime. Most people know someone affected by the disease. We all do. Well, a new therapy can help reduce one of the most visible side effects, hair loss. Barry Peterson is here to show us the science behind cold caps. Barry, good morning. Good morning. Women say one of the most difficult things about chemotherapy for breast cancer is losing their hair. When the treatment kills cancer cells, it kills healthy hair cells right along with it. But for many women, it doesn't have to happen. There's a technique called cold caps, used for decades in Europe, but almost unknown here. These brave women took us along their journey to save their hair, and with it, they say, their identity. So this one takes an hour. There's nothing unusual about the chemotherapy drugs Mary Nell Wolf is getting at this Denver clinic. You want to do your chin strap? What's unusual is on her head, a cold cap, chilled with dry ice to 30 below. As it warms, a new one is strapped on tightly every 20 to 30 minutes. This goes on for eight hours. It's not really pain. It is an overall feeling of, I just want this off my head. In the most recent study, roughly 66% of women kept more than half of their hair. Doctors have different ideas about why it works. One theory is that it constricts blood flow, keeping the chemo from reaching the scalp. Another is that it freezes many of the hair follicles and the chemo is simply shut out. Is it working? It is working. Um, I have the majority of my hair. Mm -hmm. The oncologist told me this morning that I would have been completely bald had I not used the cold cap. She gets moral support from her husband. Yes, that's me. We are together on this journey. Why is maintaining your hair important to a woman? I think it gives you a sense of control. It gives you a piece of dignity. It doesn't work for all chemo drugs or for cancers carried through the blood like leukemia. There are concerns that blocking the chemotherapy could let cancer spread to the scalp. The women who choose to do the cold cap are really motivated. Dr. Tessa Siegler is an oncologist at New York's Weill Cornell Breast Cancer Center. Our opinion is that the risks are very, very small, if any. Siegler sees two good effects, one for patients. I think some of it is a look good, feel good. The other effect for doctors and how they respond to women who still have their hair. We've been surprised at how our interactions are a little bit different. In what sense? More positive? More, or... more positive, for sure. Using these caps can cost a patient several thousand dollars out of pocket because they are rented by the month. This version circulates coolant through one cap. It is far less available since it must be leased by hospitals. Users then pay by the treatment. Call DignaCap. It received approval by the Food and Drug Administration last December. But neither is reimbursed by insurance. That's why Bethany Hornthal in San Francisco helped to found Hair to Stay for women who can't afford the cold caps. Their organization has offset the cost for more than 170 women. I think that insurance needs to step in here and to level the playing field. How does that feel? Nice it's, and snug? It feels good, yes. In New Jersey, Susan Melchion yeah. demonstrated the Digna caps for us. She decided it was worth yeah. the cost because right. for her, there was no price on beating cancer. I can go out and just be who I am and not have the breast cancer define me. What does that mean, not have the breast cancer define me? Not live the cancer, but live going through the struggle or the treatment of it and coming out the other end and being fine. Extraordinary women. All the women we spoke to for this story, doctors and patients, stressed the importance of awareness. There can be hefty out-of-pocket cost, but women can't even make the choice if they don't know about it. This treatment options and most doctors are not talking about. I'm happy to report that my wife, Mary Nell, <laughs> had her last chemo four months ago. Look at her hair. It looked that good. For, through the entire 
process. I thought I was going to do better with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 and thank you for sharing this story with us. It's clearly a very them. emotional story because mm -hmm. of the success of it. Yes, yeah. and what she went through. Yeah. Tell us what you went through. It's, um, it's, wonder, it's a wonderful process because it allows women to share with each other and to save their hair. Unfortunately, women don't know about it in the United States. I found out from a CBS friend who happened to go to a breast cancer symposium mm -hmm. and told me about it. So you have to start it before you start your chemotherapy. Um, but thank you for spreading the word. Because so just make that's one quick point. Important. It's very painful. And he tried it for like 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And gave, I said, get this thing off my head. <laughs> yes, it, you started an hour before the infusion, through the infusion, and four hours afterwards. So it's an eight-hour day. But it works. Yeah. But it yeah. works. Thank you. You're one tough woman. Oh, thank, thank you. you. There are many You're of us Mary. out there. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Good team. Pleasure. Thank you thank very you. much. Thanks for having us. Mary, Mary.